Hey everybody, uh, time for another Using Emacs video. It's uh, been a while, these seem to be getting spaced farther apart. I have to kind of try to motivate myself to do these a little bit more regularly. Um, so today, just a couple of quick things, uh, two small features, uh, both of which I'm playing with a little bit more now. Uh, so this should be pretty quick. So the first is, if, if you use Emacs, you're using it for a while, and I'm just gonna bring up plain old uh, vanilla Emacs with nothing here, no special extensions. One of the things that you're probably used to over time, or you get used to, are, are using buffers. So, you know, you can have some uh, control X V to go to another buffer. Let me change my size here. Uh, so this is the scratch buffer. Uh, control X V, let's go to other. This is another buffer. Uh, control X V. This is the third buffer. It doesn't matter if the text is a little bit small. Control XB, you know, let's go to test.py. This is a Python buffer. You know, I don't have any, again, I'm not even saving the file yet. So it's not going to keep anything in terms of um, uh, the highlighting or the coloring or anything. But the point is I have all these buffers and you know we can do Control XB to switch between them and we have different windows for them. And one of the things that um, after a while you start accumulating a whole bunch of buffers, um, which some people don't mind, um, some people it bothers. Um, I go back and forth with it, uh, but sometimes you don't remember all the buffers you have. And so the first thing you'll do is you'll use the list buffers command. So if we're here, uh, list buffers, and you see down there we have our buffers, and we can go here, and we can look at our buffers, and we can, uh, let's go to the messages buffer. Okay, that's great. Um, and you can do some nice operations there. And control X, control B defaults to opening that buffer down there. And, um, and that's nice, and it works. Uh, and you can even go here and type help, type H, and you can see is there's a lot of stuff you can do with this. You can um, remove from the display. I mean, I don't use this particular mode too much, uh, but you can um, you can mark uh, the lines buffer to be displayed. So there's some marking here. There's a bunch of stuff in here. So let's quit out of that. Um, but Emacs has a much better uh, way of looking at buffers, which is iBuffer. Whoops, monkey. So I'll just type escape x i buffer, and you can see that it's a little bit nicer looking. Um, you know, and again, you have your help here, so you can do something like you can uh, let's mark a couple of these. Let's mark that one and that one, and we have D for you can delete both of them. Uh, if we go back over here to the help, you can see that you can you can save the mark buffers, which is nice. Um, you can do other things with, you can do incremental search within buffers. There's a, uh, you can do an occur within buffers. Um, so I like, like, uh, like the function occur down here. You can pipe the buffers through things. Lots of stuff that you can do with them. Uh, I'm looking for one here. Uh, view the mark buffer in this frame view the mark buffers in another frame. I'll actually show you that one in a minute. But it, you can even see just from the basics that it's a nicer looking buffer display. Um, and so most people say you should immediately change to this. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get rid of that, we're gonna get out of that, and I'm just gonna go to the Emacs that I have running normally. And um, let me dig into my font so everyone can see this. And we're going to go to my configuration file. And we've got some, um, we've got some configuration here. So you notice the first thing I do is control X, control B is now I buffer. And that means I'm using this instead of list buffers. But you can also do some nice settings to make this look a little bit better. And I, I didn't use the manual for this. Um, I found this post over here um, by Martin Owen, and it has, you know, I basically copied this over and I read through this and it showed me how to do all this stuff and then I started searching around. But the basic idea is I can set different groups here. So I have my diared buffers or things that are in diared mode. My org buffers end in org. My web buffers, da 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 da, etc. Um, and so now if I do my control X, control B, you see I'm really nicely organized here into these different parts. So I've got a couple of programming ones up, I got a couple of scratch ones, I got 
default ones. So this is really kind of nice. Um, and what I can do here is I can do the same things. I can mark these. Let's mark the three of these. And I said the H opens these in different frames. And there we go. They're open in different frames. You know, so that's, you know, that was that H key from this. I still usually use this just for, um, just for deleting buffers, to be honest with you. But it's nice and it, um, it helps organize things. So another thing I want to show you about this is let's go to another buffer called Zowie for no particular reason. This is the Zowie buffer. And um, I wonder if I've run this already. I think I actually, I already ran this, but you'll notice that the Zowie buffer isn't appearing in here. And the reason for that, let's go to the uh, myinit buffer. So we'll just use that to navigate. You'll notice that I've added this to this list, I buffer never show predicates Zowie. And I'm still playing with this in terms of how it should work. Should it be a regular expression or is it just looking for this one in the string? This way it won't show buffers with this name. So you can explore that a little bit. And um, I'm going to comment this out because I really don't want to keep this in. But the nice thing there is if there are buffers that you just don't want to see, they don't bother you if they're there, but you just don't want to see them in your iBuffer display, you can get rid of them that way. So that's iBuffer. Um, really nice, really easy. Um, doesn't really cost you anything to get started with it. You just can copy over configuration like this, and then you're off to the races. And it, it just makes it, again, it just makes it a little bit, again, I still just use a regular Control X B to do a lot of my switching. And remember, I'm using, you know, that, that council swiper stuff for this. But, um, but again, this is just kind of a nice, it's a nice clean interface. I can see things the way I want, um, so I definitely recommend it. Now, the other package I want to show you quickly, um, and I'm only going to do this um, a little bit, is I'm starting to do some web development again. So if I go to, let's say, I'm just going to go to a temp file and test HTML. And so I've been using, you know, I've been using snippets to a certain point, um, something like that. I've used web mode, which does completions like that. And um, Arjun over at Build Fun Things um, pointed me towards Emmet mode, and he's got a really nice Emmet mode video. And so I'm just going to show a couple of things about Emmet mode here, but I'll also link to his video, which is really, I would definitely recommend you check that out. But Emmet mode is a really nice way of generating HTML. Um, and I looked at this when it was very new and it was just Zen coding and it didn't work the way I liked it, but the idea is very simple. Um, you can type in a tag and then hit Control Enter and it finishes the tag. Um, and div is the default, or I can have div and I want to have a class. So this will be like class one dot class two and it gives me my classes. Or I can type and that Control Enter is my key there. I say div with some ID and some class and that's that. But since div is such a basic tag, I can just like, um, I don't even have to type in with that or if I want an anchor. Um, it doesn't anchor. So if it, it's some of these things are built in um, and some of them, like I can even type my tag like that, or I can type in my tag with an ID and text equals hello, get something of that nature. Um, so it's a really, really nice way of, um, of entering tags quickly. So you can do something like, let's say I want my li not the li, I want my ul, and then I want five list items. So that's really easy. Or I can be, um, I want li with a class of, or I'll say an item like that, and I'll say times five. And notice, and let me just undo that so you can see what I typed. So it's list item with a certain ID, but then I use this dollar sign, and then times five, I want five of them. and um, Bang, there you go. So it's really nice and a quick way of getting that. Um, I'll show you just a couple other examples. Um, you can do something I want in a table. And in the table, I want, let's say, a table header. And then I want five table rows. I don't want five table rows. I want five TDs in that table header. So just like that, I've got my framework for my table. Um, and then I could come down here and I can say, well, I want a table row. And inside the table row, I want five matching those. So I can certainly do that. But you can even do stuff like this. You can say, I want a table. 
And then in that table, I want a table header. And in that table header, I want, well, I'll make three of them for now. But then I want to go up a level. And I want a table row, which has TD times three. And so now all of a sudden here, I've got my table header and my table row all filled in in one shot. And notice that I'm doing, um, I have the, the control K works on the semantic units. So I think I can even do something like this. I haven't tried this yet, but let's try to say I want this four times. So I got my table header, then it's table row, table row, ta bang. So, and let me just undo that so you can see the actual string. So you can even build up these complex, um, these complex structures really pretty quickly and easily and then just go back and fill in the blanks. So it's a really, really, really nice mode. It also works for CSS stuff. Um, I'm going to link to the Build Funds Thing video um, and reference the reference here I brought up to um, Emmet mode, really nice. Lots of great examples in here that you can see make the font a little bigger, um, parent-child relationships, all sorts of neat things you can do. Um, I'll put a link to the eye buffers here. So hopefully this will spur me to um, you know, start making a few more videos a little bit more actively. Um, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to make a summer project to make more videos at the blog more regularly. So hopefully I'll be able to have the energy to do that and the motivation to do that. Um, I hope you enjoy these and uh, that's it for today.